Hello. In the second part on the uh, environmental cost benefit analysis, I now go in a little bit more detailed level and uh, discuss this uh, so called net present value test. So let's first start with um, how in practice the environmental cost benefit analysis is conducted and what kind of uh, steps are involved. So I took uh, took this uh, from an uh, article with Mika Kortelainen that appeared in uh, Ecological Economics some years ago. So basically there are six steps that are, are listed here. So first of all, we need uh, a problem definition that uh, what what does this project uh, aims to do? What kind of might be the alternative ways to implement it? Uh, uh, who does this uh, project uh, influence and whose welfare is considered? And what would be the time horizon of the project and and its its impacts as well? So having having this kind of problem definition in mind, and of course it might might be also like clarified and revised later on when we start to actually then go to the further steps. But uh, having at least some kind of uh, initial problem definition in mind, uh, the next step is to identify what are the the actual impacts of the of the project or alternative ways of implementing the the project. And uh, this could be referred to as uh, environmental impact uh, analysis. And very often then in this, um, this second stage, it is important to also rely on some, uh, some uh, uh, experts out, outside of uh, economics domain, perhaps some ecologists, for example, that, that how does, for example, the uh, project influence the, the ecosystem and ecosystem services. So having identified how the how this kind of uh, impacts might be to the environment, then uh, then the third stage is to then evaluate these impacts. So, so this means that uh, converting these impacts uh, uh, somehow in monetary terms or putting some kind of price tag on these impacts. And this will be the, the next major theme, so theme number nine in this lesson. So I do not go to the to the valuation. Uh, in such a detail, uh, let's us just assume that uh, it is possible to uh, value these these environmental impacts in monetary terms. And uh, in the fourth stage, when we have this kind of everything, both uh, this kind of uh, construction costs and also economic benefits and environmental costs and benefits, then the fourth stage concerns discounting. And this is the, the, the main theme of this, this current lecture and the next, the next also. So then when we have this kind of discounted uh, costs and benefits, then the idea is to then uh, compare this uh, discounted cost and benefits using the net present value test. And then this allows us to then select the project or projects to be implemented. And finally, it's also a good idea to do some sensitivity analysis that uh, to gain an understanding that how robust the result is that, uh, okay, for example, if you, if you make some kind of uh, small change in the, for example, uh, discount rate that we use or interest rate used in discounting, then does the result uh, change dramatically? So, so if this, uh, if the, it's, this uh, selection is very robust, then of course we can be uh, confident to recommend for the decision makers that, uh, that this project is, is worth implementing or, or otherwise that it's not worth implementing. So these are the six essential stages that, that, that we typically need to, need to, need to uh, go through when in the environmental cost benefit analysis. So now what do we mean by this net present value test? So let's look into that in a little bit uh, more carefully. So this is actually what this cost benefit analysis really boils down to. And uh, here's the formula that uh, I took from the textbook by Herman et al. So if, if it looks a little bit scary first, then don't worry. It's, it's actually very, very simple. So here is B. Capital B refers to this uh, monetized benefits of the of the project, and C 
refers to the monetized costs. And the point here is that these costs and benefits, they tend to occur at different uh, time periods. So here the time horizon is uh, from, from uh, zero means that this is when the project uh, starts and capital T is uh, the, the time horizon of the project or when, when we stop cal com calculating these uh, benefits and costs. It's also possible to include some kind of terminal value that uh, that what would be then the value of the project uh, uh, in period capital T. So there might might be might be also something non-zero value remaining at the end. So here then then R refers to the to the discount rate. So you can think about it as a, as for example some kind of interest rate that is used for discounting these these monetary benefits and costs that occur in different time periods. So the subscript D refers to this kind of discount, discounted benefits and uh, discounted costs. So on the bottom of the equation, there is capital B subscript D minus capital C subscript D. So that just means that it's the, it's the difference of the, of the discounted benefits and discounted costs. And what does this discounting means? It is just this, uh, this uh, in the upper, upper equation, we can see that we, we can do it separately for benefits and separately for costs. So for example, then we have this kind of uh, benefit stream over, over multiple time periods. So for each period, then we, then we discount this, uh, these benefits occurring in period T to the, to the present value. And this discounting occurs that we divide this B in period T with this kind of discount factor, which is uh, one plus R to the power T. So this uh, this uh, one plus R in, in parentheses in, to power T then converts this kind of future benefits to the, to the net present value terms. I'll give you an example shortly. But there is nothing really more mysterious than that, that this is just simple, simple um, uh, exercise in, in, uh, in discounting, converting these uh, uh, future benefits and future costs to the, to the present value terms by, by discounting. And obviously here, this, this discount rate R plays some role, and I come back to that in the next video lesson. So then, how does this uh, this uh, this same same kind of exercise can be done in the in the usual economic cost benefit analysis? So this slide uh, just tries to extend it that uh, that what what do we do then if we have the net present value of the environmental impacts? So it is just uh, we can think about this taking these environmental uh, impacts uh, separately. So if we think of this BD and CD as this kind of economic benefits and economic costs, then EC here in this formula are then this uh, stream of uh, environmental impacts. So in some sense, uh, expanding uh, economic cost benefit analysis to environmental cost benefit analysis simply means that we also take into account these environmental impacts. And notice that it's also possible to uh, calculate or separate this uh, this uh, environmental part from this kind of economic cost benefit analysis. And an important point on the slide is also that uh, that this uh, EC part, this environmental impact, it could be positive or negative. So it's possible, for example, that uh, that some positive environmental impacts could make this kind of net present value test uh, positive and make make a project. Uh, uh, worthwhile from societal point of view, even if it is negative from the economic point of view, and vice versa. It could be also other way around that if uh, if uh, some project might appear very lucrative from the economic point of view, but if there's huge negative uh, environmental impacts, it might be still uh, not worth implementing from the overall societal point of view. So in this sense, in including these environmental impacts uh, as a as a part of the assessment can can change the at least potentially can change the the unprofitable investment to become a kind of uh, attractive from societal point of view or or it can be profitable but uh, but not attractive from the societal point of view so let's now get to the 
simple illustrative example also taken from the from the textbook. So this is simply uh, considering some very very short term project. So there is only five years starting from year zero and ending year four. So here is the typical kind of um, anyway time structure of of uh, of any any sort of projects that uh, that would be in cost benefit analysis or environmental cost benefit analysis so if you look at first the column called expenditure so this expenditure refers to this kind of uh, um, monetary flows to this what what we then account for the cost of the project so there's initial investment of 100 uh, let's say 100 euros and then subsequent uh, uh, subsequent years there would be let's say operational cost of 10 euros so typically the whatever investments we are talking about there's like like this uh, cost side that these costs occur immediately and a large proportion of the costs occur immediately not all but but a large proportion whereas then this the column receipts then this refers to these benefits so stream of benefits so initially there is uh, uh, no benefits no income stream because uh, the project is still uh, like uh, like in the construction stage and then in the first year or year not year one then there will be 50 50 euro income second year 50 euro third year 45 and then uh, so suppose that then this uh, then this uh, whatever investment in some kind of machinery or whatever then it becomes obsolete and there's no no expenditure no receipts this kind of project is is uh, is um, get closed down or 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 perhaps this uh, whatever investment uh, is is uh, liquidated or sold and uh, so idea here is that that these uh, these um, expenditures and receipts also should be of course discounted so so we should also take the discounting into into account but then the last column this net cash flow then then means that initially the the balance gets negative so there is like a minus 100 euros in the year zero and then in in the second year there is plus 40 if you have this uh, receipts minus expenditure so so net cash flow is is uh, 40 euro positive uh, second year it is also 40 euros positive and third year it is uh, 35 euros positive and then the question is that when we when we add up these net cash flows over the over the entire time horizon no well we can easily see that uh, that it becomes positive because uh, 40 plus 40 plus 35 is is greater than 100 so so at least with this kind of discount rate it is it is positive but uh, then then it is also important to take into account that uh, that uh, that we need to also discount these future benefits and and this is why the the role of the discount rate is is uh, very important and i come back to that but uh, but i think this example nicely illustrates that uh, that why the discounting matters this is because typically the costs occur immediately and the benefits are then realized over longer time period and for example suppose that we need to we need to uh, we need some debt financing to 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 make this investment so so we need to take some uh, some uh, credit for 100 euros to make this investment and then of course we also need to pay some interest for this for this credit uh, so so obviously then this um, cash flow in the future need to be higher than just 100 euros because then we need to also finance this uh, this uh, this credit so pay pay interest for this for this debt and so that's that's a, that's a like a, like a obvious economic reason for why why we need to discount these uh, benefits and costs of course you might might think of some kind of equity financing but then also we need to have some kind of uh, uh, return on equity as well so it doesn't matter is it like like uh, own money or somebody else's money that we are investing anyway some kind of uh, some kind of uh, rate of return is required for the for the investment so what about then if there is some 
some uncertainty about this uh, these uh, benefits and costs so then we will also need to take into account somehow somehow um, the risks involved in the in the in this um, so uh, in this example it illustrates that what what if we do then uh, expected values and um, this is just the same example as considered uh, in the previous slide uh, but now suppose that there is uh, there is some kind of um, we, we can make two scenarios that if there is a, let's say there is a high demand uh, with a, with a probability of 60 where this uh, this um, income from the project would be 50 euros each year and then there would be also some kind of low demand scenario so with a probability of 40 then there will be less so it would be only 45 euros per year and then therefore this kind of uh, uh, net cash flow would be 40 in the good situation and 35 in the in the in the weaker economy and and then if we take the expected value so this is very very elementary example so so we multiply this uh, uh, 40 euro with the probability of 0 0.6 and we multiply this 35 euro in year one with the probability of 0 0.4 the expected expected value of the net cash flow in this case is then 38 and then then taking into account these kind of expected values then then uh, we we find that actually then the expected net present value on the bottom row is becomes negative so so and i noticed that in this first or, or this year zero when the investment is done so so typically then taking into account the risk it is is uh, making these uh, net present value smaller because typically we know fairly sure that what is the what is the cost of investment of course there might be also some uncertainty about the investment cost in in some some big projects but uh, but uh, here here in this example it is the investment of 100 euro occurs for certain so so this uh, this uh, initial cost doesn't really change but uh, but the uh, expected value of the future benefits is somewhat smaller when there is some risk of of how how big this investment or how how big these benefits might be there is of course also 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 other other ways of of, uh, of we, we might also need also more comprehensive assessment than just the expected value but uh, but this is mainly for purposes of our our course to illustrate that uh, that risk is also a factor to be taking into account and then it's possible to make for example some kind of scenarios and and put some probabilities for those scenarios to, to make it practical so in the next lesson then i will dive a little bit deeper to the time horizon and the discount rate which uh, which we found already that they are very very important parameters in the cost-benefit analysis. See you then. Bye-bye.